what God is giving us to share. So we just want to thank the membership. We always want to thank our membership. We thank you and praise God for you. We thank for the tithes, the offerings, and mostly we always thank for prayer. So I'm not going to hold this up. I'm just going to pray. Um, God's daughters ready to share words. So, Father, we just thank you and praise you in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. Father, we pray in the name, your name, Lord God, the name above all names, Lord God, that you just ready us, Lord God, equip, Lord God. Just sanctify this atmosphere, Lord God. Change it from this ordinary room, Lord God, to the place of worship, Lord God, a place where you're comfortable and being in the midst, Lord God where we can come to worship you, Lord God, in spirit and in truth, Lord God. We just thank you and praise you, Lord God. Father, we lift up your daughter to you this morning in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. Father, breaking every bond, breaking every chain, breaking anything spoken over her, any attack, anything coming against her body, Lord God, right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Father, we just free her up on a permanent basis, Lord God, to continue to do what you have called her to do, Lord God. Father, empower her to make an impact for your kingdom, Lord God. We just thank you for her, Lord God. Father, just bless and keep, Lord God. Let your spirit just rest in her, Lord God, to bless us with a word this morning, Lord God. We just thank you for her and her commitment, Lord God, to you and your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Father, I just decrease this morning so that you can increase in me. Let your spirit overflow, Father. Let me pour out exactly what you desire me to share, how you desire for me to share it this morning. I pray for those who are watching, the listeners, that they not be hearers only, but as they put this word into practice, that they will be doers as well. We just thank you and praise you this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 God is good. And we're just thankful this morning because, you know, here at Remnant International Church, we want to disciple believers so that they can understand God, how he flows, what they need to be doing, and how to shift their lives based on biblical promises. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. I think the... Amen. Okay, I'll just go. So, um, John 14 and 12 says, Verily, 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 I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my father. Amen? Amen. So as I read that scripture, I tried to do a comparison to see if like always the message version or another version goes deeper or explains it more or says something a little different, but it said the same exact thing because there's no other way to say it, right? Greater works than these shall he do also. So we make things complicated sometimes. You know, maybe we don't always mean to do it, but we can make things complicated. God never made things complicated, right? John 14 and 12 means that if you're a believer, what Jesus did, which was multiplied bread, right, and fish, healing the sick, raising the dead, right? Not someone way raising someone out of a coma, but someone who was literally no pulse dead, right? Because Jesus did that, this particular scripture is saying that not only would we be able to speak and command life back into people, but that we would even do greater things than that, right? It didn't say only a pastor could do it, or only a theologian can do it, or someone who went to seminary could do it. 
an apostle, or maybe someone who can trace their lineage back to one of the 12 disciples. He just said, those who believe in me, right? Right? So what does that mean? That means not just he that attends church, not just one who is related to the pastor, not just ones who've been at a particular church for the longest, right? And definitely not the ones who sin all week and show up on Sunday to sing and supposedly usher in the presence of God, right? It means also not the ones who love the world more than the word, right? It's about kingdom. It says he that believes, right? So let's ask ourselves a question this morning. If it says he who believes and we believed, why aren't we seeing greater signs, wonders, miracles, right? People dying prematurely, poverty running rampant, people suffering, right? Sometimes going into church and leaving the church the same way they came in, right? Because many simply don't believe. As I was working on this message, the Lord said, because some simply don't believe, right? They've been hearing, just like you and me probably, that Jesus is coming soon. They've been hearing that since they were five, seven, ten, right? And it's, it's been so long without them seeing active signs, wonders, and miracles in their very midst that they don't really believe it anymore. They go to church, they go through the motions, but they don't believe it in their heart. And the key to John 14 and 12 is that he who believes, right? You can't do signs, wonders, miracles. Even if you pray and you don't believe what you're praying for, you might as well not even pray. There's power in belief, right? And we have to cast that unbelief out no matter how it got in our lives, no matter how it got in our hearts, no, no matter how it's become so everyday and common to us, we have to learn how to cancel that out so that we can walk and flow in the power and the anointing of God. Amen. Right? Many people have suffered and lost hope, faith, and belief. I said that, right? There are some who are even preaching on Sundays without that faith and belief that they need to even impart it to the ones they were put in place to cover, right? Don't believe it, just, just ask God, right? He said, they are, they are pastors jumping ship because they figured What's the point? They haven't seen anything they preach come to pass, being manifested. So they've lost hope. And the sad thing about that is that when it starts at the head, it flows down to everyone else, right? Why does this happen? And as I was sitting listening, because, you know, preparing a message isn't, isn't a monologue. It's not just me saying what I want to say, but it's about me hearing what God is saying about what I'm sharing and the questions that are being posed and what the people of God need who are listening and hearing and just trying to get a grasp on something new in their life, right? So I said, Lord, why does this happen? Because many are stuck in the old way of doing things, trying to force their traditions to work for them, but God wants to impart the new to them. Amen? So only a fool, and you may have heard this, only a fool will expect God to pour his new into the old. You might have heard that, you know, insanity is doing the same thing and expecting different results, right? But the Lord is saying, you don't put new wine into old wineskins. And he means that figuratively and literally, right? 
God is not worried if the, if the choir's colors are matching. He wants and needs you to receive power. Otherwise, he said, you're simply warming a pew or chair. Amen? He said, a full church looks good to visitors, but a powerful church looks good to God. Mm. Amen? Amen. Let me just say that again. A full church looks good to visitors. They'll come in and say, wow, it's packed in here, right? But a powerful church looks good to God. Amen. And that's what matters. How we appear to God, how we flow, what we're doing, you know, what our structure is. If we're yielding to the spirit of God, if we're truly, if we're not just saying we're giving God space to do what he wants to to do and are actually giving him that space, right? Yeah. He wants you to flow in power. He loves it when we get it from a spiritual perspective. He loves it when we teach it and he loves it when we break free of religious chains of bondage. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. Stop being religious. That's the title of today's message. Stop being religious. In Luke 18, starting at verse 10, it says, Two men went up into the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee standing by himself prayed thus, God, I thank you that I'm not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even like this tax, tax collector. I fast twice a week. Mm. I give tithes of all that I get, but the tax collector standing far off would not even lift up his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Scripture says, I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humble, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. That's scripture. Stop being religious, right? Amen. Religious people say the right thing. They say the Christian thing, you know, the kind that you, you can't even say good morning unless they're saying, I'm blessed, highly favored, God woke me up, my right mind turned me around, put my feet on solid ground. Sometimes you just need to say good morning. It's not about being religious. It's about being thankful and knowing the one who has kept you and is keeping you, right? We don't need the holy spiel. We need the relationship and we need lifestyle, right? Your lifestyle should show who you serve. Your relationship should show who you serve and who you love. There should be nothing stopping you from making time with the one or that is above every other name. Amen? Amen? We have to stop being like the Pharisees, doing stuff to be seen, doing stuff for accolades and applause, right? Doing stuff so that people can look at us. It even talks about that when it mentions fasting, right? When we're fasting, we shouldn't go around with our faith hanging, faith, my face hanging down, looking like we're starving just so somebody can ask, what's going on? Oh, I'm fasting. We need to be able to flow with God and move with God. It's not about the applause and the accolades of people, right? We have to humble ourselves. Why? Because without God, we are nothing. What are we without the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? Luke 20, starting around the 40th verse or so, I think it's 42 or 43, it says, Beware of the scribes 
who like to walk around in long robes and love greetings in the marketplace and the best seats in the synagogues and the places of honor at feasts who devour widows' houses or rabashata and for a pretense, meaning for show, make long prayers. They will receive the greater condemnation. Amen? He's warning us, don't be like them. Don't be like them that do stuff for show. Don't be like those who just do the religiosity thing. Flow how God is telling you to flow. Be led how God is leading you. You know, we have to learn to be still and be filled with the presence of God. When you are filled with the presence, then you are led by the presence of God. You can't be led with something that you're not filled with, right? Miracle signs and wonders. And God said this, this is key, you know, write it on a post-it or jot it down in your notes if you're taking notes. Miracle signs and wonders will always be a byproduct of an intimate relationship with God and an invitation to go deeper, right? So that means people aren't going to flow in signs, wonders, and miracles in their lives when they barely make time for prayer, when they barely make time to read their word, when they barely make time to sup and break bread with other people, believers or not, to share the gospel and just build up and edify, right? If you try to operate, if you try to operate without a relationship with the one who was and is and is to come, and you're saying, I wanna do signs, wonders, and miracles, but you're refusing a relationship with the king of kings, then you're not ever gonna flow in supernatural power. You're actually doing magic, right? Mm -hmm. Which taps into the demonic realms and equates to witchcraft. You know, many wanna make people fall out. Many wanna pray and see people shake. Many people wanna heal the sick and raise the dead. But if you're not doing it through the power of God, you're doing it through the power of the enemy because God is only ever going to release that to those who are walking in right relationship with him, right? Amen. So that's why these new age people say, oh, I say my affirmations every day, so God is on my side. How can God be on your side when you're saying words but void of the relationship with the one that has the power? That's why New Age is something different. It's so popular to say affirmations. It's even, po it's even popular for people to name them decrees. But if you don't have a relationship, then you have nothing backing the words that you're saying, even if you're saying them daily, right? And again, God loves... He, he just loves to give me analogies so that I can fully grasp and then I can share it and you can grasp it. He said, you know, just like you have to have a license to drive, right? You have to have a license permission to operate in the spirit. And that license is called relationship and belief in the one you have a relationship with. Let me just say that again, right? Just like you have to have a license to drive, you have to have a license, which is permission to operate in the spirit. And that license is called relationship and belief in the one you have a relationship with, which is God, Jesus, and Holy Spirit dwelling in you. Amen. Amen. I mean, if you read your Bible, if you've read your Bible for any amount of time, you'll see the Pharisees always asking some question, right? Trying to trip Jesus up. Can you divorce? Is this lawful? Is it permissible? Should he be doing that, right? They were testing him and trying to entrap Jesus because all they knew was the religious way they were following. 
let's do it this way. The ones that came before us did it this way. The ones that came before them did it this way. But Jesus wants to do a new thing in your life. How can he do the new if you're trapped in the old? Amen? Right? And the Sadducees were no better. The Pharisees, the Sadducees, there were other sects and groups and they were all following what their little cliques did, right? That's why they didn't even recognize the Son of God before them, right before their eyes, right? Hmm. What you believe matters. Amen. And some of us have to unlearn some of the wrong teachings we received when we were seven, eight. You know, we say, oh, they told me this in a church, so it's true. And there are people who are led out by all different kinds of things, right? But is that what God's word says? Anything anyone tells you should be backed up, right? In the word of God. What I'm saying now, I'm giving you scripture for this because God wants you to understand this. He wants you to grasp it and he wants you to know that it's him. This is not my thoughts. This is what the word of God said. Amen. You have to let go of the old for the new to come, right? Mm -hmm. I think I shared this before about wineskins, but you know, the wineskins were, I believe they were made from pig or pig intestine, I think, but it was some type of animal. And what happens is when the, the wine skin got old, it kind of shriveled up. It kind of got rough. It kind of got tough and hard. So when you try to put the new wine into that old wine skin that was already old, aging, and probably cracking a little bit, it would burst and it would spill all the wine. Likewise, all the good that God has for you, he cannot release it if you're determined to hang on to that old mindset, that old religious way of doing things. That is not what God wants. He wants you to flow with his spirit. If he said, get up here this morning and do nothing but pray for an hour, we pray for an hour and we close out and we see you next week. That's just how it works. We're not like, oh, it has to be a sermon, it has to be this, it has to be that. We do what the Lord God is saying, urging, and giving us the unction to do. But you have to let go of the old for the new to come. You can't have both, right? One by default will not exist with the other, right? Now, faith, faith is so important and faith partners with that belief and it's required for everything and anything supernatural to occur. When Jesus was standing before the, the multitudes, right? People would just follow him everywhere. But he was one time, and this is in Mark 9, one time he was standing before the multitudes and there was a man whose son had a dumb spirit, right? He was sharing everything that the spirit was doing to his boy, trying to throw him in the water and burn him up, throw him in the fire, right? Mark 9, starting at 23, let me just read this. Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help thou mine unbelief. Right? Amen. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit in the man's son, saying unto him, thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him, and enter no more into him. And the spirit cried and rent him sore and came out of him. And he was as one dead in so much as many said, he's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up and he arose. Hallelujah. That's belief. That's miracles. That's signs and wonders. Don't let any religion water down your belief. Don't let any religion 
limit you and keep you stuck. Don't let any religion make you forfeit that the word says the power that we are to carry as believers, right? And here's what religion is in a nutshell. It's doing something the same way again and again, expecting a result, you know, that might never necessarily come, right? I, like I said earlier, it's almost like insanity, except, you know, we're supposed to be worshiping and believing God in this space. It's about relationship. If we learn one thing and take one thing away from this message this morning, it's about relationship. It's about being led. It's about communing with God and conforming to the one who is omnipresent, omnipotent, and omniscient, right? So we have to stop letting religion block us from walking in what John 14 and 12 says. It's time to get into a right relationship with the one who was born and died so that we could live. Amen? When many non-believers or let's just say no longer believers, we can call them because sometimes they're people who once claimed to believe in God. But when they talk about the church and they walk away and they no longer want to be bothered, right? When you ask them, and you know, even if you persist a little bit, because sometimes they don't always want to come clean with why they left, but the main thing that they point out is hypocrisy, right? How people are holy on Sunday, and throughout the week they'll give you the finger in traffic, they'll curse you out if you, you mess up their food order, right? And as, as I ponder that, I'm reminded of something I saw on social media and, you know, I took a picture of it because I wanted God to, to speak to this particular statement and then I can possibly share it. It said, inconsistency breaks down belief. Inconsistency breaks down belief. So what does that mean? right? It means that if you say that you believe something and you are inconsistent in honor, honoring that thing that you say you believe, your belief will begin to break down, right? That's why so many people who are raised in the church, they see no power in the church. So they start dabbling in worldly things. And before you know it, they're saying they're a witch. They're saying they're a warlock because they deem that there's more, more power in that than it is God. That's a lie from the pit of hell. But I'm just saying, right? Hallelujah. The thing, the difference between those two things is the power of God requires a relationship. Dealing in magic, new age, you don't have to have a relationship. You just do what the thing says and whatever's supposed to happen, you know, may happen, may not happen. But we're thankful for the power, the unwavering, the unfailing power of God, right? We have to build up the people of God. We have to tell them what the word says. We have to show them how to work it. It's not enough when someone comes to you with a need, you brush them aside and just tell them, go pray. Many don't know how to pray. They don't even know how to start. They don't even know how to commune with God. Even though it's simple, religion has made us think it has to be this loud, verbose thing to even be heard by heaven. And that's not true, right? We have to stop being religious vipers stealing the very life out of the people who love God, forcing them to conform to what appears holy. And we don't most times even know how to adequately disciple them and teach them so they'll learn and then they, they're able to practice it on their own and grow their relationship with the Father. 
We have to get that John 14, 12 power and we have to use it to draw those who don't know Christ and disciple them and teach them how to live a life that truly honors him. It's all about the kingdom. It's all about the kingdom. As I was preparing for this message, the Lord has just had me in prayer mode just consistently because what the enemy wants most is to steal this message. He doesn't want you to get it. He, don't want, he doesn't want you to activate it. He doesn't want you to walk in belief. He doesn't want you to think that you're good enough to come to the throne of God. He'll use all sorts of tactics to try and throw you off course and throw you off the path that God has you on so that you're never walking in this power he's promised us. Verily, 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 I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. I just give God glory today. I just praise his name today, because he is good. And I pray that everyone watching this message would hear it, begin to apply it, and then see signs, wonders, and miracles in their lives. Remember, it's about relationship, right? It's not about how long you've been in the church. It's not about any of those things that other people use to measure, but it's about the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Father, I thank you this morning, God. I give you glory, honor, and praise today. Have your way, God. Continue to move in this, in this place, in this service, through this message, Father God. Lord, let your fire fall right now in Jesus' name. Burn up every religious spirit, any contrary spirit, anything that has us acting like Pharisees and Sadducees, Father God. Anything that comes trying to question and usurp the authority of Jesus Christ himself. We bind it up and cast it out in Jesus' name. Father, let your fire purge, Father God. We cancel every word curse, every witchcraft curse, anything not like God that is intended to come against this message. We decree wholeness on the people of God, and we decree that no one will watch this message, no one will hear it, and return the same way next week. We just decree newness. We decree that new wineskin on on the members in Jesus' name, on the watchers in Jesus' name, in the on um, those who just happened upon this broadcast in Jesus' name. We decree wholeness like never before, healing like never before. Father, break the back of poverty on your people in Jesus' name. Anything that's keeping us in a holding pattern, anything that's keeping us taxiing the runway of our lives, not letting us board, not letting us depart, Father God, and go where you need us to go. Come up against that now. Give us eyes to see and ears to hear, Father God, so that we can know spiritually what is operating in our very midst, and we can begin to tackle it and take it down with prayer, with fire, and with authority. We just thank you, God. I pray even now that you would just continue to build us up, Father, as we pour out weekly here at Remnant International Church, that you would fill us up, God, until we overflow. Fill up those who are watching, God, until they overflow and go into their neighborhoods and begin doing that new thing that you desire for them to do. Lord, send the hungry, send the lost, Send all of those who may be in a backslidden state because they didn't see any power in their church. Let them come, Father God. Let them sit at the table. Let them all come and we dine at the table with you, God, so that you can give us instructions and that you can show us your love. I just thank you this morning in the mighty name of Jesus, God, for the opportunity to do what only you can do. 
set the captives free. I just thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Did you want to share something? All right. So we just thank each and every one of you for tuning in again. You know, like we always say, don't just watch it and get it for yourself. Someone else you know needs this message, right? When it's not about church membership. They can watch the videos. They can share them with someone else as long as they get the message that God poured out this morning. That's all that matters, that they get it and begin to implement it in their lives. Amen. So we just thank you for watching. Um, again, if you want to find out more about Remnant, remnantinternationalchurch.com, and we will see you next week. Be blessed.